This is the MATLAB program uh, implementing the Clank Nicholson method to solve the heat diffusion equation in a one dimensional wire. So, first we clear everything we have. Uh, then we are going to define here the heat equation, the parameters we have in the, in the heat equation, uh, and the range in space and time that we want to, to solve the, this equation. So first, the heat conductivity parameter. In this case, we are going to put it as one half. Of course, we can change all these parameters here. It can be changed just having here another number. Uh, the total length of the wire that we are going to consider, the maximum length, it's going to be one. The maximum time that we are going to consider, so the, the, the time range is going to be one as well. Uh, then here, we are defining other parameters that are needed to solve the equation. Uh, within the uh, crank nicholson method, so the, the parameters that we need for the implementation of the, of the method. So here, NT is going to be the number of time steps. In this case, we are going to consider 2,500, for example. And then it defines, of course, a time step that basically is the total time over the number of time steps. Then we have the an X going to be the number of uh, uh, steps on space, uh, which in this case is going to be uh, 50, but of course we can change as well. Uh, that defines uh, a space step, which is the total length over the number of space steps. Then we have another parameter, which we are going to call it uh, B, uh, B, which actually is going to be useful for uh, the implementation of the method, because it appears in this way, which is the conductivity times the, uh, the time step over the space step, the square of the space step. And this is actually the what uh, the we're calling the alpha parameter in the finite difference implementation. So uh, the initial condition we are going to consider uh, for in, in this example, actually, um, uh, which defines the initial temperature of the wire um, uh, at any uh, any position of the of the wire. In this case, we are going to consider a sine function. Actually, it's going to be a sine pi times x. That's going to be uh, our case. So basically, um, we have to define the u n one one because that's the initial time. So that corresponds to the end index in this U matrix, the index one, and then we have to define that one for all different N numbers, and that N will run from one to NX plus one, which is the number of the uh, uh, points we have on the space, uh, considering the uh, space discretization we have defined before, and we are doing that uh, with this uh, loop here. At the same time, we're using that in order to define different po points in the x uh, axis. So that will be a vector x. Then another important thing, besides the initial condition we have just defined, is the boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions is that as the temperature in the wire at the boundaries for the left and the right at any time. And in this case, we are going to consider it to be zero. So it's a simple case. Um, so for that we have to define uh, for any time both the u uh, element, uh, uh, following u elements, uh, those, those u elements uh, where the x index is 1, which is the, the first element in the x space corresponding to 1 left, and the last in the x space will be nx plus 1, and we, then we have to define these kind of elements for any uh, any time. So this j will be running from 1 to nt plus 1. And we are doing that again with this loop here. As you can see, we are defining them to be 0 uh, the borders. Uh, at the same time, we are using that loop in order to define also the time uh, positions where, uh, so the time vector we have due to the time discretization. So everything is ready here, just in order to uh, define the uh, uh, the 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 uh, Cramp Nicholson method. So we have to remember which was the implementation of this method. In the Cramp Nicholson method, we have like two matrices. One was uh, m right, another one was m left. 
So we have to define these uh, matrices before we are going to the implementation of the method, which is just here. And uh, so we have to take these, uh, the expression of these both matrices, the one on the right and the one on the left. Sorry, it's left here, left. And we have to um, define this matrix, and that's what we are doing. That if you look at these matrices, you can see that both matrices, both one on the right and the one on the left, they are uh, they are actually uh, three diagonal. So basically, they have two different, three different lines, uh, which are uh, different from zero. One is the main diagonal, and the both sides of the main diagonal they are also different from zero, and all the rest of the elements are are zero. So we have to define these three diagonals, and then that's what the, the strategy that we're going to use here in order to define these both matrices. And then after we have defining these uh, three diagonals, then we are using them in order to build these matrices, both the one on the right and the one on the left. So these AAL and BBL and CCL are these three diagonal matrices that we are going to define. So first, this, uh, uh, this vector here, that vector corresponds to those elements which are in the main diagonal of the, MA, of, of the left matrix. As you can see here, the dimensions of this uh, uh, main diagonal is uh, nx minus 1, which is actually the same dimensions as the matrix we do have, the square matrix we do have in this uh, crack Microsoft method. And this is the expression we do have. 2 plus 2 times uh, b, which b is the alpha parameter that appears in the, in the method. And then we are also defining the, those elements, those uh, the two other diagonals uh, that are in the, in the matrix. Uh, this AAL is going to be the diagonal that's going to be uh, below the main uh, diagonal, which in this case the dimensions of this uh, vector is uh, nx minus 2. And this CCL is going to be uh, the, the, the vector or the, 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 the diagonal, which is above the main, main diagonal. The main diagonal is the one which is in the middle. So we are using these three vectors in order to build the MM, the, the matrix on the left, in this way. This is the main diagonal, this is the diagonal which is just below the main diagonal, and this is the diagonal which is above the main diagonal. And then the MML uh, matrix is just the sum of these uh, three different uh, uh, contributions. So we are using the same strategy but different values in order to define the matrix on the right, which is actually here. So once we have defined these uh, two matrices, then we are ready to implement the crank Nicholson method. And if you remember, yes, we have to calculate the u vector at time j plus 1. In this way, it's inversion of the matrix on the left times the matrix on the right times the u vector evaluated at the time j. As you can see there, the dimensions of this u vector is just nx minus 1. And the two remaining components of this u vector, so the one at 1, the first element and the last one, which is at nx plus 1, so the indexes corresponding to the uh, space, uh, space uh, they are coming from the boundary conditions. So these are the only unknown ones. In this case, boundary conditions are pretty much simple because they are just zero. That's why in this implementation of the Chronicles method, we don't have a column that we're calling R that was coming from the implementation of the boundary conditions. So in this case, we do have this, the rich led boundary conditions, but this is a particular case where the uh, values of the U function of the boundaries are always zero. So in this case, the R matrix that we're defining in the implementation of the method, they are just basically zero. That's why they, are, they, uh, they do not appear here. So we have to do that for all different times. That's why we do have this time loop here. And doing that, we are defining the U matrix. So all the values of the U function, both at different positions at different times. So after finishing that, that's done. We have calculated the U value. In this case, that could be the temperature at any position of the wire at any time. And then, then we are ready to plot it, for example, in this case, we have like two different figures. 
So the first one here, we're just plotting the uh, as a function of x, the u function at different times. For example, as a function of x, you can see here. So we are choosing here the time corresponding to the first index. So it will be just the initial uh, temperature of the wire, which is of the wire, which should be the sine function that we have uh, mentioned before, and we are doing that with this blue color. Then uh, uh, we are going to do that uh, at different times here, which are defined uh, them as here. So nt, remember, is the number of uh, time steps we have considered over 100, so it will be time later than the initial one. Another time is this one, another time will be just nt, which is just the final time. Uh, and here, the second figure will be just a three-dimensional plot of the of the u function as a function of x and and time. So then we are ready to run the program and see what's the result that we are getting. Okay, we have like two different figures. Uh, here we have the one on the left. You can see here that that's the initial time, the one in blue. Uh, the design function, as you can see, it goes decreasing because the temperature here is zero. That's the cooling, so the temperature in the wire is getting cooler and cooler. So you can see it goes down, um, uh, and even the maximum, of course, it's always in the center because you don't have, you're not breaking the symmetry you have between the left and right because both the temperatures on both sides are are uh, the same. So the, this dash green line that corresponds to the temperature at time later. That dotted uh, line here, the blue line, corresponds to another temperature. You can see here, that dot line, it will be the temperature at the last time we have considered in the calculation. You can see it's, it's pretty much uh, 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 close to, to zero. And, um, and uh, so, uh, as you can see, it's the kind of uh, the kind of behavior that we might expect in this cooling down of the wire. And here on the right, as we have said, we have the second the second figure where we are showing here the uh, uh, temperature. In this case, this is the U function in the set axis as a function of the x. That so this is the, in this axis here we have the x, and here as a function of time. So these different uh, lines here will be just the uh, cats along different times of this three-dimensional plot here. So, but even though it's uh, it's nice to have this three-dimensional plot uh, in order to see the general behavior of the, in this case of the U function, it's even more interesting to have these two-dimensional ones in order to analyze with more with detail the behavior of the U function. So basically, as we have said at the beginning here, we have some the uh, MATLAB program for the crank nicholson method for a particular case of diffusion equation in considering the Richlet, particular Richlet uh, boundary conditions.